Welcome to Chorus Stories. Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Hi friend, don't forget to subscribe, say that you like the video, and also press the bell so that you get notifications every time I make a new video. If you love Heidi, Cherry, and Vea, or Tucker and Leo stories, you can now get exclusive stories on my Patreon account. Go to the links below the video and you can join Heidi Cherry and Vea Club or the Tucker and Leo Club and get exclusive stories with your names in them. I love you all so much. Enjoy the story. Bye, friend. Are you ready? To meditate with Cory. Try and be still and quiet as you lay in your bed. Slow down your breathing so your heart, your mind, and your body can respond in a way that makes you feel calm and relaxed. Try very hard to let go of your day. So if there's thoughts that pop into your mind as you listen to this story, see if you can pull your attention back to my words and my voice and ignore everything that pops into your mind that's nothing to do with what you need to do now. And that is, relax, not worry, and let go of your day. Now is the time for sleep. Now is the time where you can rejuvenate your mind and your body so you feel really good tomorrow. With your eyes closed, activating your inner sight, using the sight that you have when you dream and your imagination. I'd like you to imagine that you're standing at the bottom of a hill. In front of you, there's hundreds and hundreds of steps. The steps are built into the hillside they look like rough designed stones of different shapes and sizes that clearly look like a staircase. But the staircase has got grass growing over it and there's parts of it that's just bare dirt. At the top of the hill, there's an ancient looking castle. You've been told that this is a very special, cool place to go. And that's why we're going to go there today. You have an idea of what's in the castle. A friend of yours told you that they'd been before and it was so nice. And that's why you were intrigued enough to come today. There's other people scattered here and there. Some people have decided to just walk up the hill and not use the steps. It's a steep hill. It's going to take you some time to get to the top. But it's a beautiful day. 
The sun is shining bright in the sky. There's a few white fluffy clouds over your head. It doesn't look like rain. It doesn't look like any bad weather will interfere with your plans today. You're wearing your comfortable shoes and you've got comfortable active wear clothing so you are perfectly dressed for the occasion. You have a backpack, a small one, on your back and it has water, it has a snack and also an extra jacket packed in there in case it did get cold. But right now you're just wearing a t-shirt and comfortable bottoms and you feel very happy with that. You start to make your way up the steps. Looking up, you can see the castle at the top, but it does look quite far away. You wonder to yourself, do I have enough energy to make it all the way to the top? But you do. It's going to be easy enough. The trick is, your friend said, to just take your time and enjoy the journey. You decide to put your earphones in and listen to an audiobook that's very inspiring. The audiobook is about challenging yourself, taking risks and going on adventures. It's the perfect book to be listening to. You plug out the world and plug in to your book. You don't turn the audio too high because you want to be able to still hear the people around you, the outside world, but also comfortably hear the book at the same time. The book starts talking about the benefits of trying new things, stepping out of your comfort zone. And this is something that you're doing today. You wouldn't normally come to a place like this on your own, but you're being brave. You're stepping out of your comfort zone and you're deciding to take on a new challenge. And you know that when you do get to the castle, it's all going to be worth it. That's what's driving you today. The prize inside the castle is going to be worth all of the effort of hiking up these hundreds of steps up this big, steep hill. The grass is really, really deep green. That's because it's rained quite a lot lately. But the grass looks as if its thirst has been quenched and it's drank so much rain and now it's full and bright with colour. On different parts of the hill, you notice that there's bunches of flowers here and there, sprinkling a little bit of colour other than the green. The book is started to talk about how to build confidence, to build confidence within oneself. You have to step out of your comfort zone. And every time you succeed, no matter how small the succession, confidence is built within oneself. You agree with this statement. It makes total sense to you. 
Building confidence is not something that's very easy. You have to be uncomfortable to get comfortable. And then when you're comfortable, you feel more confident. It's like little light bulbs going off in your brain, agreeing with almost everything the book is saying to you. Some people are coming down the hill, down the steps, as if they've already been to where you're heading. They look happy. You see a couple, older couple, both with white hair, smiling and joking with each other about what they just experienced. The old lady is wiping her jacket as if she's trying to brush something off it. And that makes you smile. You know what she's doing. But that will all become clear in a bit. There's a family. The man and the woman have a couple of children with them. They're coming down the hill. The children look quite young. And you think, well, if those young kids can do it, I can definitely do it. You take your time, one foot in front of the other, going up and up and up, on and on. The book's got to a part where it's talking about trusting yourself. Trusting your own abilities. But how can you trust your abilities if you're not willing to challenge? If you're not willing to expand? Unless you put yourself in situations where you're challenged. How will you know how far you'll stretch? under the circumstances. This makes total sense too. The book is basically saying to be able to get stronger and wiser and more experienced with things, you have to put yourself in a position to be able to be challenged and experience that. Through challenge, you gain strength and wisdom. Once again, internally, your mind has little light bulbs going off like twinkle twinkle lights on a Christmas tree and you think, yep, yes, oh yes, that makes total sense. Going up more steps, you start to get a little bit out of breath. Not too much, but enough to start to feel warmer. You're glad you're not wearing a big, heavy sweatshirt. You would have been taking it off by now. The cool cotton of your t-shirt is perfect. And you do appreciate the fact that there's a very slight breeze that blows by now and again and every time it does it cools your face and all the parts of your body that are exposed to the day and the environment around you. After about 50 more of these steps you start to perspire your forehead gets all glistening and wet. But when the wind blows by, it feels delicious. So cooling and refreshing. A couple of people pass you by on the staircase. And for a moment, you feel like you should be going faster. You feel like maybe you're not trying 
trying hard enough. But then, you remember that you were told by your friend to just go slow and steady and take your time. Sometimes, the snail or the turtle or anything slow out there wins the race. This makes you think for a few steps, maybe ten steps, about snails and how much you like snails. Slimy little things, but so interesting to watch and look at. And it's right, they do seem to always get to where they're going. The book is telling you how to build trust. It's asking you if you know the different parts of your life that you can trust yourself in. Do you trust yourself to know who you are? Do you trust yourself to be loyal, to be truthful? To be respectful. These are all questions that you ponder over as you keep walking up the steps towards the castle. Do I trust myself to be loyal? I do. Do I trust myself to be respectful? Yes. I do, you think to yourself. But to be respectful to others, you have to be able to know how to respect yourself. Otherwise, you wouldn't be capable of being respectful to others if you didn't have that quality within you to do that for yourself. And that makes you think about some people that you know that aren't very respectful. It gives you an understanding that maybe those people just don't respect themselves and therefore they don't have the ability or even the knowing of how to respect others. For the next 30 steps, you get lost in your own thoughts, thinking about how important it is to know yourself. When you finally wake up out of your own mind and focus back on your journey, you realize just how close you are. You're only about 10 steps away from the top. You decide to count these next 10 steps in your mind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Finally, the ground levels out and you walk towards the castle. The castle looks like it's part ruin, part still, just as it was hundreds of years ago. There's a lot more people up here at the top. There's benches here and there. Some people are sat eating sandwiches on the benches. Some people look like they've been taking a break there. Maybe resting from getting all the way to the top of the hill. Lots of people are heading into the castle. And you follow the path to go do the same thing. 
Inside, there's a reception desk and you walk over and speak to the lady. She's very friendly. She gives you directions of where you want to go and you purchase your ticket. Ticket in hand. Directions in mind. You go to where you need to go. You take two more flights of stairs. The stairs are very grand inside of the castle. The building inside feels quite cool. It makes you wonder if back in the day when people lived here, how they heated the place. Because it's a nice day outside. Yet inside the castle, it's cool. Cool enough to reach for the jacket out of your backpack. You put the jacket on and start the second flight of stairs. When you get to the top, you walk down a big, wide hallway. All the walls are stoned. The floor is stone. That's probably why it's cold in there. And then there's a wooden door. On the door it says, Puppy Palace. You smile. You go inside and the first thing that you notice is the room is warm as if it's been heated. And then when you open the door, it's a really big room. The room looks like it's got maybe 12 couches, lots of different seated areas, some forming a square as if it's just a cozy little corner all to itself. And then some of the couches are just placed on the back outside walls. There's people scattered in different places, maybe about 20 or so in there. Some children, some middle-aged. And then there's older people too. But they're all there for the same thing as you. The puppies. There's puppies. Everywhere. There's so much happiness and laughing and giggles and smiles. And there's little puppy sounds and puppy barks. And it's very loud at first. But then your ears adjust. And your body softens. And you instantly start to get very excited about the possibility of snuggling and cuddling with all of these little gorgeous puppies. There are so many of them, all different breeds, different sizes, some very, very, very tiny, some bigger. Some of the puppies are bounding all over, crazy, running, playing. Some of the puppies are eating the food and drinking the drinks that are there provided for them. Some puppies are laid on puppy dog beds and they're snuggled in with each other, sleeping, taking a nap. Some of the puppies are playing with the people. Some of the puppies are sat on the people sleeping. Some of the puppies are climbing on the furniture. Some of the kids are on the floor playing with the puppies. Some of the kids are sat on the sofas playing with the puppies. There's one old lady that you notice that sat tickling the back of a puppy's head while he has something to eat. You spot a couch that looks perfect. 
You walk over to it and sit down and it slumps all around you. It's very comfortable. It's made from a velvety material and you run your hand over it automatically and it feels soft and silky. As soon as you sit down, at least six different puppies run towards you. Someone new to smell and play with. One of the puppies scampers up your leg and instantly gets comfortable on your lap. It's warm and its fur is soft and silky like the couch and it just instantly looks as if it loves you and has known you forever. Trust. It makes you think about the part of the book that was talking about trust. These puppies trust you already. You lean forward and pick a white puppy up that's got curly, tight fur. Maybe it's going to be a poodle or something when it gets older. I mean, it's a poodle now, but you're not quite sure what it's going to be and how big it's going to be. But for now, it's the cutest thing you've ever seen. It's tiny little pink nose and it has blue eyes staring up at you that you instantly fall in love with. You bring the puppy up to your face and it licks your nose and it has puppy breath. How can anyone be unhappy in a place like this, you think? The puppies that come to be with you come and go as if they take shifts. Someone new comes through the door and they run and greet them and other puppies come and see you instead. There's one puppy that only has one eye, tiny little thing with one eye and you instantly want to adopt it and take it home and take care of it forever. But that puppy is so cheeky. It nibbles on you constantly and pulls, trying to pull the sleeve off you. It's a funny little thing. You're so happy here. Who wouldn't be happy in a puppy palace? The best place you've ever been. The room smells like puppies and lavender oil and a burning fireplace. You can smell the wood. That's why it's warm in there. There's a fire guard over the fireplace so none of the puppies could hurt themselves in there. But once you've been in the room for a while, you notice the crackling sound of the fireplace and you realize it sets a certain feeling to the room. It makes it even cozier and welcoming. The people that work there with the puppies are all happy, smiley, friendly people. As if they don't mind the hundreds of steps they have to climb to get to work every day. Who would mind if this was the reward? You decide that this is somewhere where you would like to work. You'd love to work in the puppy palace. Spending your days surrounded by all of these cute, loving, trusting puppies. There's so many poop and pee pads all over. They must be constantly changing them 
because it doesn't have any indication of puppy toilets or the aroma that that would cause in there. The staff are very good at their jobs. But these little puppies are animals and animals pee and poop. And that's part of what you would have to deal with if you worked here, you think to yourself. But then that would be a challenge. And your book is all about challenges. Because challenging yourself creates confidence. This place would definitely make you a more confident person. For sure. It's like you have a whole tribe of little puppies that support you and would have your back. Like a little puppy family. All there for you. For whatever you would need. Ready to lick you, sniff you, cuddle you and just be with you. Make you feel loved. Make you smile. You can literally feel your heart swelling in this room. Getting bigger and bigger by the minute. You stay here for a few hours until a time where you know it's time to go home. You put one puppy down that had been sleeping on you for at least half an hour. Place it gently on the sofa next to you and stand up and the puppy barely notices, all warm and snuggly, curled up on itself. You carefully walk towards the door, saying goodbye to a couple of people as you do. You walk down the stairs and out of the castle, and smile at the people heading inside about to do what you just did, about to feel as good as you do. You walk towards the top of the hundreds of steps that you are going to walk back down. And you remember what your friend said. Just take your time and enjoy the journey. And that's exactly what you do. The end.